As an amateur or a semi-professional footballer, we all imagine our life as a pro. What it feels like to play in front of thousands of fans, what it feels like just to kick a ball around all day and that be your only worry, and what it feels like to be paid to do so. But when you actually get to the pro level, there's some surprises, some good, some bad. So from the beginning, circa 2015, the very first thing that surprised me about the professional game was just how fast the game moves, the speed of play at the professional level. It's not like they're way more athletic or way faster or way more agile or they're way more flashy on the ball or technical. It just seemed like they were all on the same page and they were all thinking three or four steps ahead. You step into a professional level rondo and it's overwhelming. You're standing on the side of the rondo and you're just watching this ball just zip around from player to player and every player just seems to be handling it perfectly. And all of a sudden it comes into you and you're so focused with the pace that the ball whips into you that you don't even have time to think about where the ball should go. And then at no surprise, you end up losing the ball or passing it into the guy in the middle. And then now you're in the middle of the rondo. And this is honestly how it feels in every single drill from the passing patterns to the possession drills to the small sided. You're just constantly surviving at this level, at this speed of play. And I really don't think this is something you can truly appreciate or understand until you step foot in a professional level training session or with other pros. But it 100% is the very first thing that surprised me about the professional game. The second thing that really surprised me about pros, and this kind of ties into speed of play, but it's just how simple and effective pros play 95% of the time. By the second or third day of training with a professional team for the first time, once the dust almost settles and I'm able to really look around and actually analyze why the speed of play is so high, you realize that it's so fast because every player is taking one or two touches and they know exactly where that one touch pass needs to go as that ball is coming into them or even before that ball is even played into them. And then that 5% of the time when they receive the ball with time and space facing a defender or it's in the final third or they're around the box and something needs to be created, that's when they do something special. That's when they take extra touches or try out a move or try a high risk option because that's what the game's calling for at that moment. Pros are just exceptionally good at making the right decision for that specific moment in time. And most of the time, that moment is calling for the player to play quick, fast, and effective. The third thing that surprised me was just how competitive it was. Once I had trained with this professional team for a few weeks, I started to know the players, which players were the key players, which players started, which players were on the bench, and which players didn't even travel or suit up for the games. And again, I remember having this thought looking at this third string right back and thinking, this guy's a baller. This guy's a really good player. But once you sit down and think about it, it, it makes sense. This guy's a pro. He's a professional level player. He was once the standout at his division one or division two college team or semi-pro team, or he came from another country with a smaller professional league and he was a standout player there. There's a reason why this guy is paid to play the game. It, and it sounds so obvious, of course, all pros are gonna be good players, but it really didn't sink in that even guys that don't dress up for the games are still ballers. Because when you're a semi-pro, the gap between the starting players and the, the second string players is, is pretty noticeable. And if you go down to the amateur level or a pickup game, the, the gap between the best players there and the worst players is huge. But as you go higher and higher and higher up, that gap shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until you're at the prem where you have multiple players in these positions where the only difference between them is tiny marginal details. And again, as a fan, I don't think you realize that the difference is that close between these players until you're actually there and you see it firsthand. All right, guys, so if you need a highlight video or you need an up-to-date highlight video, then the sponsor of today's video is for you. Stafford Productions specializes in the creation of professional level highlight videos. I had the opportunity to work with them. They created my 2023 highlight video, and not only was the process incredibly streamlined, I also love how my highlight video came out. I do promote players to create their own highlight videos, film their own games, do all this stuff yourself to learn the process, but it is a huge project and takes hours and hours of work if you do it the right way. So if you want all of that hassle of that project to be handled with professionalism, with speed and with simplicity, then Stafford Productions is for you. They collected all of my highlights. They made a custom introduction for me. They put all of my best clips towards the front of my highlight video. They put a circle around me in every single clip to highlight me for visibility and the best part is that they did all of this in 24 hours. And that wasn't just for me. They do this for every single highlight video they create for every client they work with. Again, I've made dozens of highlight videos for myself. The process takes hours and hours and hours. It's so tedious. And even the final product that I create still doesn't stack up to Stafford Productions. So I highly, highly recommend them for all of you that need a highlight video completed. So if you're interested, head over to Stafford Productions, tell them that I sent you and get yourself a professional level highlight video today.
The fourth thing that surprised me about the pro game is that being good enough to sign a pro contract is just step one out of a 10, 20 step process to sign that pro contract. When I was younger, even honestly, when I was in college, I just thought that if I developed my technical, tactical, and physical game up to the professional standard, that I would be offered a pro contract. And it makes sense, but it's way more complex of a process than I thought. This surprise really sunk in after I had gone on multiple trials with multiple different professional teams. The one that sticks out in my head, I was on trial in 2018 with a professional team of the USL Championship, and I had a great trial there. The coaches seemed to really like me. I really performed. I thought I did really well. But afterwards, when I sat down and spoke with the coach, he basically said, look, you're a USL championship right back, but you're not our USL championship right back. He went on to explain to me that he wanted his team to have an identity of being more creative, tiki-taka, more Latino-based type players. And that my more American style hard work, make 10,000 sprints up and down the field, 1v1 defending, a little bit more grittier style right back was not really going to mesh that well with how he wanted to play the game. So that's when I realized that being good enough was step one. Step two is fitting into the style of play that the coach or the team wants to implement. Step three is do they need your position? Step four is do they even have enough roster space to sign you? Step five is if you're an international, do they have a foreign spot for you? Step six might be do you fit in with the guys as a group off the field? Step seven is does the front office want to sign you? Do they see a need to sign another player? Step eight is can the team and the player come to an agreement on salary and housing and bonuses? Step nine is do they have the housing that you require? And step 10, does the league fully approve of the signing? Is it in the appropriate window? Does the Players Association approve of your salary? There's just so many steps that go into this process and it was just shocking when I saw that it was so much more complicated than I thought. The fifth thing that surprised me as a pro footballer is just how little pros make. Fief Pro did this global football employment study, and this is back from 2016, so you have to realize these numbers are lower than they are today. Only 14% of full-time professional players worldwide made over $100,000 a year, and 74% of professional players worldwide made less than $4,000 a month. If we're looking at the US, the median household income for 2023 is like 75K a year. If we look at the MLS, there are players in the MLS on the minimum who are making 67K a year. So again, let this sink in right now. There are players who are marking Messi, playing in front of 30, 40, sometimes 60,000 fans in a beautiful, huge stadium at the first division of American professional soccer and they're making less than the median household income in America. Even in the league I compete in, the USL Championship, I think the average salary hovers around $50,000 of total compensation, and that total compensation also includes your housing. So on one hand, it is amazing to be able to make a living and play this game, kick a ball around and get paid to do it. It really is a dream come true. But even if you are a successful pro and you make it to the USL Championship or MLS, you still aren't guaranteed to be making money where you can just retire from everything once you're done playing. And as a kid, a high schooler, semi-pro, I put professionals on this pedestal where I imagine if you're playing in front of 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 fans, you automatically are set for life. But in actuality, you're only retiring from what you make as a pro if you are in the global elite, the top one, two percent of pros worldwide. The sixth thing that surprised me is just how much free time you have day to day. Once I started to settle into the routine of being a professional footballer, you quickly realize that a lot of your day is just spent waiting for the next day, waiting for the next training session, waiting for the next game. On your longest days, you might get to the facilities at 8 a.m., have breakfast, do your prehab training, you have your after training treatment, you have your lunch, you go to the gym, you shower, you're all done. You will probably get home around 2 p.m. So you leave around 7.30, get home around two, even then, the longest days, you still have majority of your afternoon, evening, night to do whatever you want. Since you're a pro and you don't have any other jobs or you don't have school or anything, the rest of your day is just kind of chilling. You watch TV, you play video games, maybe you have other hobbies, you hang out with your family, and you really just prepare for that next training session. You recover the right way, eat the right way, and sleep the right way. When you travel for games, it's just a lot of waiting on airplanes, waiting in hotel rooms, waiting for kickoff. I stand by the fact that being a pro footballer is the dream life. It is the best job on earth. There's a reason why I haven't quit, because it is the best thing, but that free time starts to eat at you. There's a lot of players that complain about boredom or loneliness, there's a huge reason as to why why I do this whole Become Elite channel because I'd go crazy if I didn't have something else in my life to occupy my time. But it is so surprising when you finally become a pro and you think you're gonna have this crazy action-packed lifestyle 
and you really kind of just sit around and watch a lot of TV and a lot of movies. The seventh thing that surprised me about being a pro is just how basic the training sessions are. After you go through a couple seasons at the professional level, you start to see that all the training sessions are pretty much the same regardless of where you play, which team, which coach, even which country. You do a warm-up drill, passing pattern, some possession, you do a tactical drill focused on a theme, and then you try to implement that theme in some small sided, and then you maybe finish with some crossing and finishing. That is like the template for the average training session at the professional level. Of course, the drills can change a little bit, the focus can shift, restrictions can be added, but that's pretty much what an average session looks like. And I don't know why I thought this, but as a kid, I thought that a professional level training session was going to have the craziest complex passing patterns, the craziest drills, and it's going to be such a complex thing that that was really where you get the challenge of the professional level setting. But in reality, the complexity of the drill isn't what makes it a professional level drill. What makes it a professional level drill is the speed of play, the intensity, and the attention to detail by all the players and coaching staff. You can have a square passing pattern where all you're doing is just doing two touches and passing the ball around the square, but you can make this an incredibly intense professional level drill if every single player is locked in to this drill. That's a professional level drill, even though the drill in itself is something that you can do with an eight-year-old. The eighth thing that surprised me about the professional level is just how much the focus shifts from development to preparing for the next game. At the youth level, amateur level, semi-pro level, a lot of the focus, even majority of the focus, is on developing the players to improve these players to one day play in college or one day play at the pro level. Winning is important. You want to win, you want to be successful, but that's secondary to the development of the individual players. At the professional level, that completely gets flipped on its head. Of course, development is still important. You want all these pros to develop as players, to grow as players, to improve, but the main focus, the only thing that matters is winning games and performing in the season. And as a player, I knew that winning was more important at this level, but I was a little surprised with how that affected the training sessions. The training sessions are way more geared to the first team performing, the tactical side of it, how we're going to go out on this weekend, how we're gonna play, how we're gonna press, all that kind of stuff, and way less about just improving your technical skills, or improving you as a player. And I think a lot of players are surprised with that, especially if they're not on the first team and they're getting the focus. They kind of feel like they are in the shadows and they're almost forgotten about. The ninth thing that surprised me is just how cutthroat of a business the professional game can be. If you're not performing every single day in training with how competitive the environment is, most likely you're not gonna get a chance to play on the weekend. If you don't play in games, there's little chance that you're gonna be offered a contract that next year for your current team or even for a different team. Even if you do play in these games, if your team is not performing and you're at the bottom of the table, most likely your team is searching to find players as a replacement for you that can get them to the top of the table. The second that your performance dips, you're out of form, a little injury pops up, someone comes in to replace you and the spotlight instantly shifts to them. All the while, every single team is constantly looking for better players, more talented players, and younger players to come in and fill your position. Every single day, it's a constant fight in your position, in your team, in your league, and in the professional game. Only the players that can consistently perform at a high level every single day, week after week, month after month, season after season, are the ones that stick around and have long, successful careers. I watched the full David Beckham documentary the other day, and even him, he's one of the best midfielders in the world, and all of a sudden, he gets sold to Real Madrid, just like that. I didn't really know the full behind the scenes and just how cutthroat it was, just not even a goodbye. Just one day, yeah, you're gone. If that's how brutal and cutthroat the game can be to one of the best players in the world, imagine how brutal and cutthroat the game could be to me or to other players who are not even close to David Beckham. I think when I was younger and more naive, I, I always just thought that once you get to the professional level and you finally get that chance and you make it, it's really easy to hold on to it. You're safe, you've made it. You can relax a little bit and hold on to your spot until it's your choosing to leave and go to a different team. But as soon as you get to the pro level, the, the grind and the battle and competitiveness, that's just the start. You have to deal with that every single day for the rest of your career. The 10th thing that surprised me is just how amazing being a pro, scoring a goal, signing a contract, playing in front of thousands of fans actually feels. As a kid, I imagined all of these things and I imagined what it would feel like, but once you actually do it, it it's even better than what you imagine. All of those moments surprised me with how amazing they actually felt. There are very, very few things in the world that can give you that same rush 
as scoring a goal in front of thousands of fans or playing for your first time in front of 25,000 people. It's just an incredible feeling that I really, really push all of you guys to chase. Those moments are something that you'll remember for the rest of your life. And it does take a lot of low moments and sacrifice and grind and work to get there, but it's 100% worth it. And as pros, we have a saying that the worst day out on the field is still better than the best day in an office. So that's it guys, that's 10 things that surprised me about the professional game. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right guys, peace.